Climate change is big money. We're talking trillions of dollars being spent. And are we getting value for that money? In fact, what is the worst way we could spend it? This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More on them later. Let me tell you something you already know. Climate change, not great. Over the course of the century, as our planet is gradually transformed into Guy Fieri's gut biome, we can expect many things to happen. Hotter and longer heat waves. More frequent and more intense natural disasters like hurricanes. And increased international conflict over resources like water. All of these impacts, and the many others outlined by climate scientists, are expected to impact the world economy by... A lot. In 2019, the International Monetary Fund looked at more than 50 years of data from 174 countries and found that persistent increases in temperature reduced economic output, estimating that if the world warmed by 0.4 degrees Celsius every decade, the world's real GDP per capita would be 7% lower by 2100. And this would be felt almost everywhere. To put that in more relatable terms, a 7% drop in global GDP today would be like the economies of the UK, Germany and France just vanishing. But because economics isn't an exact science, Sorry, there was a rogue exact in there. Estimates differ pretty wildly. Earlier this year, the National Bureau for Economic Research estimated that one degree of further global warming would reduce global GDP by 12%. That's the equivalent today to America's economy, just not existing anymore. These are scary numbers about the future. How the economy will be worse by 2100 because of climate change. But as we have seen this year more than ever, climate change isn't just a future problem. It's a problem now. It is already making storms more intense, making floods and heat waves more frequent. And it's already costing huge amounts of money. A study last year found that between the years 2000 and 2019, climate change caused extreme weather that cost $2.8 trillion, or just over $16 million per hour. And note that this study didn't just total up the damages of those natural disasters. That $2.8 trillion figure is the extra damage caused by those natural disasters being made more intense by climate change. But $16 million per hour is A, so large that I can't even fathom it, and B, only accounts for extreme weather events. Let's instead consider the economic damage done to you as a consumer by climate change, even if you have never experienced a drought or a heat wave or a hurricane intensified by it. Let's look at three areas where you are paying more now because of climate change, starting with Food. Obviously, food depends on climate. To grow wheat, for example, you need temperature and rainfall to be in a certain range. Leave that range during growing season, during a heat wave or a drought, and you'll see yields drop. We produce less food. That decrease in available food leads to increases in food prices for the consumer. Food inflation has been shown to spike after periods of higher than average temperatures. A study this year found that Europe in 2022, which experienced a particularly hot summer, had food inflation spike by the best part of a percentage point. That same paper also predicted that warming in the next 10 years will amplify this effect in Europe by between 30 and 50%. Some foods are particularly vulnerable to this, such as cocoa, which hit an all-time price high this year after droughts in West Africa. Olive oil prices have shot up after hot, dry summers in the Mediterranean for the past two years. And rice has been hit by a triple whammy of droughts, flooding, and saltwater intrusion due to rising sea levels across Italy, Asia, and California. And that has raised rices. Price it. And before anybody says it, no. The extra CO2 in the atmosphere isn't helping us grow more food. In fact, as well as reducing yields through extreme weather, it's making our food less nutritious. I've made a whole video about this. But as well as these short-term increases in food price, the increase in extreme weather events caused by climate change is also increasing the volatility of food prices. Year to year, food costs increasingly different amounts. And that's a problem for food businesses who need to maintain cash flow even in fallow years. So to protect themselves, they increase their prices. The more volatile the climate gets, the higher the prices go. You need to pay more now for the same food because of climate change, whether or not that food has had a particularly good or bad year. Okay, so what's the second area where you now have to pay more because of climate change? 
Taxes. The, the finger thing means taxes. And no, I'm not talking about a carbon tax or green levies or anything like that. Your taxes go towards many different things, including but not limited to the military, national infrastructure, and assuming you live in the civilized world, healthcare. Well, climate change is increasing resource scarcity, for example, through droughts making drinking water more difficult to find, and so indirectly makes conflict more likely. The jury still seems to be out about whether it has already caused some conflicts, but no one is currently predicting that the world is going to be a more peaceful place because of climate change. Military spending either has already already or will soon be increased directly because of climate change. And that's passed on to you as a taxpayer. Also passed on to you is the cost of building new infrastructure like flood defences. As we've come to realise, we have built society for a climate that no longer exists, and shifting temperature and rainfall patterns necessitates expensive new infrastructure. And with those shifting temperature and rainfall patterns, we also see shifting patterns of disease. Tropical diseases are already making their way to higher latitudes, and healthcare systems in those countries require more funding to get on top of these new threats, not to mention the additional burden placed on them by more extreme hurricanes and floods and heat waves. You may think of climate change as increasing your tax burden because of eco policies to drive down emissions, but in fact, your tax burden is already increasing because of the impacts of climate change. But none of this compares to the cost in the third area. Patreon? Just to briefly mention that I can only make these videos thanks to the incredibly generous support of everyone at patreon.com forward slash simonoxfizz. If you would like me to keep making videos about different aspects of climate, and if you would like to get early access to those videos, exclusive videos every month, and vote on a video topic a month, this video was actually chosen by patrons, then please head to the link in the description. Thank you so much. And thank you Madang, Sammy Bilby, and Fran Karlovich for keeping me afloat. Ah, sorry. No, sorry. The third area we are now paying more because of climate change is, well... Remember that figure of $16 million of climate damages per hour? Well, a lot of that is property damage. And most people, very sensibly, have property insurance. That means that when a natural disaster happens, victims get at least some of the value of their lost possessions back. But... The insurance company? The insurance company has to pay out millions, if not billions, of dollars after an event like a hurricane. And as climate change is making such events more frequent and more intense, the insurance industry is in trouble because they're having to pay out more and more. And so, to stay in business, they've had to start charging higher and higher insurance rates, something that's most clearly seen in America, but it is observed globally. And that's only going to get Worse, your property insurance is more expensive than it would be in a world where we hadn't messed with the climate, and it's only going to get more and more expensive. There may come a time in the not too distant future when insurance companies just stop offering certain types of coverage because it's just too risky for them. And if something is uninsurable, then at least to some people, it's unsellable. And that could be a real problem. It is entirely possible that the next financial crisis, causing enormous economic damage, will come out of the insurance industry and its response to climate change. Watch this space. But here, in the present, if you spend your money on food, taxes, insurance, and there are also other areas we could have considered, then you are already paying more, you are being made poorer, by the impacts of climate change. And just to say, this doesn't even account for definitions of wealth other than economic. For example, I put value in living in a world with biodiversity, and that is also being eroded by climate change. I am being made poorer in that sense. But I digress. This is one half of the equation, the damages caused by climate change. And I've laboured this point because it's fundamental to answering the question posed in the title. What is the least cost-effective way we could tackle this problem? Now, I actually already made a whole video crunching the numbers to find the most cost-effective climate solution using the database of solutions curated by Project Drawdown. Go and watch that to find out which solution reduces carbon emissions the most per dollar spent. Because this video is about the opposite. Of all the options on the menu, it's asking which is the worst, which is the way to guarantee that we lose the most money. Now, you might be thinking investing in renewables instead of nuclear, or investing in electric cars instead of trains, or 
emphasizing personal actions instead of systematic approaches. But here's the thing, the way to guarantee burning the most money, to guarantee that you will be poorest year after year, is doing nothing about climate change. Climate solutions to bring down carbon emissions, from solar power to home insulation, are uniformly estimated to cost less than the economic damage of unmitigated climate change. Here are three different opinion pieces on the subject, linked below with all the other references. But to point you to just one source, this paper was published in Nature earlier this year, finding that the cost of limiting climate change to 2 degrees Celsius by 2100 was six times lower than the economic cost of climate impacts between now and just 2050. When you hear about enormous sums of money being spent on climate solutions, like the Inflation Reduction Act spending $783 billion, it sounds like madness. And if that spending existed in isolation, it would be. Well, actually, that ignores the fact that many climate solutions save more money than they cost to implement, like energy efficiency. You should really go and watch that video I mentioned. But that spending isn't in isolation. You can only compare spending that money and then reducing the damage caused by climate change with not doing anything and then footing the bill further down the line. And we know that bill is enormous. We are currently at the thin end of a very thick wedge, and we can already feel it. It makes absolute economic sense to limit climate change to as little warming as possible. If someone tries to tell you that it's cheaper to just adapt to a warmer climate than bring down our carbon emissions, they are wrong. A huge body of evidence says this. But actually, we are currently doing something worse than doing nothing. We are actually making the problem worse. We are making ourselves poorer now and in the future by continuing to prop up businesses that extract, process, and sell fossil fuels. Because when we say climate change is making us poorer, that's really hiding who is actually responsible. Your food costs more because of big oil. Your insurance is more expensive because of natural gas. The more we burn fossil fuels, the more carbon we put into the atmosphere, the warmer the planet gets on average, the more money you will lose. And at the moment, we are subsidizing these fossil fuel companies to do this to us at a rate of $13 million per minute. That's so much more than the $16 million per hour of climate damages. You should be pissed off about this. The least cost-effective way to combat climate change is what we are currently insanely doing. Paying to make ourselves poorer. We need to reform how we subsidize these companies. And we can do so much more. By supporting policies to reduce carbon emissions at national, regional, and city levels, you are saving yourself money in the long run. And it doesn't even cost you anything. It's like a club card, but nobody harvests your data. Which policies you should support, apart from reforming fossil fuel subsidies, is going to vary depending on where you live. Check out Project Drawdown, who I already mentioned, to get a sense of what's on the menu. But let me say this bluntly. We are already feeling the economic squeeze of climate change. Sorry, the economic squeeze of big polluting companies. And while climate solutions may seem expensive, they are nothing compared to the economic damage those companies will do to you, more of what you are already experiencing, if we don't force them to change. Think of climate solutions as an investment in the future, one with huge returns. But do you know what the best investment you can make is? It's in yourself, in your education. Back at the start of my PhD, I dedicated a fair amount of time to learning Python, the programming language. And if you've seen my PhD vlogs, you'll know that that wasn't always a smooth road to travel. But it was a skill that once learned opened huge opportunities to me. In this job, there are a great many videos that I could not have made without having spent that time learning Python. You may well want to learn a new technical skill like programming, either for a personal project or to make yourself more competitive when applying for jobs. Perhaps you would benefit from an interactive, beginner-friendly course written by experts from MIT and Google and professionally illustrated. If you think that you would, that's brilliant. Sorry. If you think that you would, that's brilliant. 
Brilliant is a long-term sponsor of this channel, an educational website and app that has thousands of interactive lessons in subjects like programming, maths, data analysis, AI, and more. Their emphasis on hands-on learning, which has been shown to be uniquely effective, makes Brilliant an excellent counterpart to learning in the classroom, but also a fun way to build a daily learning habit on your phone. For example, you could start from absolute scratch with their Thinking in Code module, work through applied Python, and even end up looking at how large language models like ChatGPT work. And you can do all of this for free. Go to brilliant.org slash Simon Clark and you can get everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. And if you like what you find, that link will also give you a 20% discount on an annual subscription. I'd just like to point out ahead of Christmas that Brilliant also allow you to gift access. So, uh, there's a present idea. That link again, brilliant.org slash Simon Clark, linked in the description, with thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do the YouTube pleasantries, drop a like, a subscription if you're feeling generous, even share it with somebody who you think might enjoy the video. If you'd like something else to watch next, then here are two videos I prepared earlier. And that just leads me to say thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.